Hi, I hope you're doing really well today. In this lesson, I will show you the four seventh arpeggios that will get you through most jazz standards and actually lots of other different styles of music. They are your major seventh, minor seventh, dominant seventh, and minor seven flat five. So the way I'm going to do this lesson is I'm going to start off just explaining what those things are, maybe how you commonly see them in music and some ways to practice them. Okay, so I'm just going to start on a C. 8th fret of the E string, and I'll show you a major 7th first. It's a root, major 3rd, 5th, and major 7th. I'll quickly explain what an arpeggio actually is. We have a scale. That's C major. If you take the first note, the 3rd note, and the 5th note, actually just those, you get what's called a triad. Lots of music and bass lines are made up from these triads, arpeggios. Some people call them chord tones. They are tones that make up chords. We might not play that as a bass player, but you would certainly play the notes separately. These are your chord tones, arpeggios, triads. Okay, so there's a triad. Slap a seventh on top of that and you get a seventh arpeggio. Okay, one, three, five, seven. Really know your any scale, okay? A major scale, natural minor scale, any mode, and be able to, to locate the notes this way and you can do this all yourself, okay? So there's a major seventh arpeggio. That's an octave on the end and I'm just going up, ascending, and then descending. I'm gonna stay on the same route and so now I'll do a minor seventh. That's a root minor third, fifth minor seventh. You can say minor seventh or flat seven, it means the same thing. Then we have a dominant seventh. Exactly the same as the major seventh, except the, the seventh note is flattened. Okay, so you've got root, major third, fifth. It's a major triad. And then you've got that flat seventh on the top. And then the final very common arpeggio is a minor seven flat five, bit of a mouthful that one, often called half diminished as well. Now actually, even though it's called minor seven flat five and it seems complicated, you know, complicated name, if you know a minor seven, you just do what the chord tells you. It says minor seven flat five, okay? This is the five. Flatten it, you've got the arpeggio, keep everything else the same. Those are your four different qualities, as they would be called, of seventh arpeggio that are gonna get you through a lot of jazz standards and actually lots of other different types of music like blues and, and, and what have you. So that isn't really how you commonly see them, you know, starting off one route. If you play a major scale, you can do exactly what I showed you before. That is taking the first, third, fifth, and seventh. I did that on C. You can do that on the other notes, you know, you've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B. You can do it on the D, the E, the F, and so on. And when you do that, you get a set of, of harmonized chords, seventh arpeggios in this case, from C major. So... Notice that you get all four of those qualities that I'm teaching you from this lesson from that little sequence. And that's a little bit more how music works. If you look at Fly Me to the Moon, for example, you'll see all those different chords within this one song. MI7 stands for minor seven, MA7 for major seven. Just a seven on its own means dominant seventh. And the MI7 brackets, little b and five, that's minor seven flat five, okay? That's more how music works. You you play around with the different chords that you find within a major scale and it's related minor. That happens a lot in these jazz standards. And that's why you'll find these chords a lot because, you know, this kind of harmony is extremely common. You need to know the arpeggio in different patterns. Otherwise, what you'll do is a common thing that bass players do, certainly starting out or maybe not too familiar with jazz, is just to always have to jump to the root in one position because that's the only one you know. So, for example, I have to jump 
to the root of, and just play the one shape that I know. But if you know different patterns, so let's stick to the A minor seven. That's the first chord of Fly Me to the Moon. Let's go. That's a minor seven arpeggio. Let's try it starting with my second finger. Okay, now little finger. Now it's the same thing, so you might say, what's the point of that? Well, I can just make things a little more musical by just going to the closest chord tone wherever I happen to be. And if I have to jump to the root every time with the same finger, that really shrinks my, my options. So that's what I would advise you to do, is to learn a minor seventh, major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seven, flat five in different positions. Take your time with this. First finger. Little finger. Second finger. Second finger, you need to use extended fingering in this, in this position here. And the other thing is to know the arpeggio, not just going upwards or ascending, but going downwards as well. So, you know. I'm playing an A on the seventh fret of the D string. If I'm starting with my little finger, I don't have to go up all the time, go the other direction. In this particular instance, it's that shape where I'm starting with my second finger down here on the fifth fret of the E string. I just happen to be starting it on the highest note. And you need to think in this kind of way now and practice in this kind of way, not just going from the lowest to the highest, but... I wrote a book called Creative Bass Technique Exercises, and the first chapter in the book is harmonized exercises, taking a major scale or a minor scale and doing this kind of thing. And there's one exercise, I just reminded myself of it. Kind of illustrates my point. So you've got an A here, and I'm doing a minor seventh. I'm actually starting on the G, which is the seventh or the flat seventh of the chord. And I'm going, so that's G, A, C, E. I'm kind of going first finger, third finger, first finger, and then shifting across to the little finger. And just taking those notes. And then shifting up a bit and doing those same notes, just up the octave. Maybe even a little hammer on. It's a really nice pattern. Go up two frets to the B now. Whoops. Really good for technique here. I got a bit of buzz there, so work on that again. Now this is a minus seven flat five, and I'm gonna continue up within the harmony. C now. So this is C major seven. In the sequence, the next two are minus seven. So those last two are exactly the same pattern I just did on the A. And I do these kind of exercises all the time where I'm just experimenting and trying out different patterns, you know, not just and stop. Going to different octaves, going to different ranges of the bass, moving up, moving down, little finger, you know, all these things. And you'll realize after a while of exploration that there aren't actually that many patterns. Then when you come to looking at jazz standards or any type of tune, then you'll, you'll be, you'll have far more options under your fingers. Let's just take the first few bars of Fly Me to the Moon. So it's A minus seven, D minus seven, G seven. So we've only got two types of, of chord there. So that was going A minus seven. And she did the arpeggio just all the way up to the minus seventh. Now stopping there, I don't want to jump down to the D and do a, a boring pattern. Now that note there, the A is the fifth of the D minor seven chord, okay? And I want to go to there. And I can descend to hit that D. But since I'm playing the chord tones, it fits the harmony. And also the line sounds a little smoother than going. But it's not wrong going to the root every time. It just might sound predictable. OK, and that's not necessarily what you want. You want ultimate freedom, ultimate creativity, ultimate expression. And the way you do that is to break out of predictable patterns. Let's carry on a couple of chords. 
So there, using scale tones as well. And I was targeting this time the third of the G7 chord. And that's a G7 arpeggio. Now, if you know the pattern really well, or the patterns really well, I should say, then you actually can, as you're playing, you'll start to see them. Your fingers will be used to not just hitting the root each time, but you'll know, oh, there's the fifth, there's the minor third, there's the major third. This is the sort of thing you practice every day, and it will really unlock the fretboard as well as your ear. These four seventh arpeggios will cover most jazz standards. You will also find a couple of other chords I think perhaps I'll go into that in another video just to keep this one a bit more concise. But you've got your, your diminished seventh and your augmented. These are two different qualities of chords that you do find a lot in jazz, okay? So I will do some, some another video basically covering those. But I think just knowing a major scale, related minor scale, all the arpeggios from within there, that really, really helps because, as I said, you're going to find that in loads of different jazz standards. I hope that gives you lots to think about when you practice. Start simple, you know, do that one octave in one position. Get your head around what the different intervals are within each quality of chord. Make sure you know how they differ, how they fit within a harmonized scale. You know, do just pick one thing per practice session. The great thing about jazz, especially if you're not a jazz bass player and you're coming from pop or rock or blues, is that it is going to expand your horizons, especially in terms of theory, but that might hurt your brain a bit when you start. So just do take these things really slowly. I've got loads of other lessons that go into the harmony of the scale and a few more exercises and things like that. So do check out the channel, do subscribe. If you do have any questions, you know, things that are bothering you, if there's anything I said that was a bit too difficult, then leave a comment because I'll often do videos based on, on what you what you want. And I may even have a video on it already, so do check my channel, okay? But thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.